When I was in school, if you were to ask me how I worked with user researchers, I have no idea. Because you know, most projects are individual and I do all the research myself. And when I went into a real full-time UX product designer role interview and they asked me the same question, it's difficult to answer. And then when I became a full-time designer interacting with user researchers for the very first time, it's still unclear what the collaboration should be. And fast forward, having worked on a few projects with a few user researchers, now I can confidently say I've worked with them and I have tips on how to better collaborate with them. Therefore, in this video, I'm going to share with you my first-hand experience so that by the end, if you have not worked with them before, you at least get to know what the process would be like, what you should expect if you were to work with them, and maybe even talk about how you might work with them in a full-time design interview. If you are already working with them, that's also great because I'm going to share with you some tips on how to work with them more effectively. And therefore, grab your favorite drink. And let's get into it, y'all. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justin. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Welcome to another episode of the Ultimate Interview Guide. Today, we're going over working with UXR, user researchers. And let's start with some numbers. I have worked with four different user researchers on six different projects so far at the time of this recording in September 2022. What's behind those numbers leads to the first part of this video. How does UX designers work with UX researchers? I've talked about collaborating with PMs and ENG before. With UXR, the collaboration is actually a lot simpler. Because you know, user experience designer, user experience researchers, they are cousins if not siblings. Why? They have the same last names. In all seriousness, UXR is definitely your ally. At a high level, UXRs will conduct research, generate insight, so their deliverables will be likely slide decks and documents. UXD designers then will take their insights, their finding, and turn it into design mockups, concepts, prototypes to solve users' problems. The outcome of our work tend to be mockups in Figma or prototypes in Framer. The next thing you should know is there are two types of research, discovery research and usability research and the interaction with the researcher depend on the type of research is a little bit different but that's okay because we're going to break it down one by one discovery research is a type of research you want to tap into the subject that you don't know a whole lot about imagine i'm a designer working at airbnb the process of discovery research with a user researcher will go something like this i approach the researcher and say hey you have a sec cool so the product manager and i were looking at the whole user journey for you know, Airbnb users traveling abroad to foreign countries. And we're trying to look specifically at the transportation segment. Say someone book a trip from the US to France and then stay at an Airbnb in France. After they touch down at the airport in France, how do they get to the Airbnb? What is that journey like? What are some of the pain points? What do they need? What can we offer? This could be a really interesting thing to dive into because the market is huge and the existing solutions, you know, are crap. So we can explore a lot. Then they will get back to you and say, oh, sure thing, let me start a research talk and I will tag you in it. Feel free to add any comments. Two days later. Then they will come back to me and sing with me on the research plan. We work on the details of what questions to ask, what do we want to find out, when it's finalized, or even 90% finalized, they will start to recruit participants. Two days later. The user researchers will conduct interviews. I will join a session, observe, and take notes. Afterwards, I will pass all the notes to the researcher. The researcher will compile notes, synthesize data, generate insight, put together a deck to share out. And that is for discovery research. The other type is usability testing, usability research. In this case, you likely have design concept A, B, and C, and you don't know which one to pick, or you don't know if any of them will have caused any potential usability issues. And you want to find out, you want to catch those early on. Then to continue the same storyline, I will approach the UXR and say, hey, so I've got three concepts for ABP Transit. So I do want to run for them with users to see if there are any usability issues. Shall we do a test? Two days later. Then the researchers will go draft user research plan while I put together three prototypes. We'll for sure have a meeting before the testing session so that I can walk through the prototypes, how they work, where to click, things like that. Then the rest is fairly similar. They run a session, I observe, take notes, I send them my notes, they compile research into a deck and share out the insights. And that will be a typical process of how a designer will work with a researcher. Well, since we have got the process down, now let me share with you my three personal and secret 
tips on how to more effectively work with UXRs. Tip number one, ask UXR for help early. Hey, I need your help. Don't be shy asking for help. Don't think of it as you're putting yourself in a position of weakness. In fact, that is actually the opposite. It showcases that you know how to collaborate with user researchers as a designer. It shows that you value inputs from UXR and they feel valued. It shows that you can create better design because you incorporate user research insights to make informed decisions. Plus, asking them for help early will actually help them plan accordingly. Nobody likes last minute requests. Putting your thoughts on the radar early gives them more time to think through the project. Tip number two, get yourself in more user testing sessions. If you're interning, get yourself involved in conducting the research. If not, get yourself to observe at least. If you're already working as a full-time designer, make sure you observe the sessions. Get yourself looped into more research sessions covering both discovery and usability testing. Why is this important? Two reasons. One, you know how research is done. You know it inside out. You have the knowledge. You're becoming a more well-rounded designer. Number two, remember what I said in the beginning, when you go into the interview with a user researcher, they're gonna ask you, how did you work with UXR in the past? You participate in a research session and then you will know. I had not formally worked with a user researcher before, but when I was interning at Pinterest, at least I was looping to one of the sessions that we were sitting in a room with a one-way mirror so we can observe how the participants interact with their phone. So oh, there's also a camera live streaming their interaction so we can see it on the screen. At least I can talk about it when the question comes up. So when the question come up in my DoorDash, in my Fitbit full-time interview, at least I can talk about them. And hey, I got an offer from both places. Tip number three, prototype for your user researcher. Walk through your prototypes with the user researchers. Tell them where to click so they know where they should click. This is also when design thinking can come into play and help you out here. Because since your researcher is doing the research for you for the project, that means both the user researcher and the participants are the users of your prototype. So keep your user researcher informed how this prototype works, how do they engage with it, how do they control it. If users get stuck, how can user researchers help them get unstuck? What if users make a mistake in a prototype? Which, how can they go back? What should they do? Is there an escape? How can user researchers guide them away from non-functioning pieces in the prototype? The next thing I think useful is to build shortcuts for your prototype. In case things go wrong, and they will at some point. The user researcher should know how to escape the prototype. Maybe it's a refresh, maybe it's a reset button somewhere. For me, when I build prototypes, I always, always have a shortcut hiding somewhere that I know, the user researcher knows, but not the participants. So when something goes wrong, the user researcher can jump in, tap, 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 done, reset, restart, we good. Doing all that will make sure there will be less funny business in the session, less hiccups, save you more time so they can ask all the questions that you want and get all the feedback that you need in your very very smooth user interview session if you were to put this uxd uxr collaboration into a design process if the end goal is to find out how to better work with user researchers then we have to focus on the need right the need of the user researchers ask them what do they need give them a heads up cool got it observe the session and take notes for them cool got it walk them through the prototype cool got it Essentially, you are helping them help you. Win, win. One bird, two stones. So those are my three very effective tips on how to better collaborate with user researchers as a designer that you can use tomorrow or sometime in the future. In the next video, I'm gonna go over interview questions with user researchers. If you see a car in the corner somewhere here, that means the video is out, check it out. If not, Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell so when the video comes out, you don't miss it. Working in tech is very likely going to interact with three parties. User researchers, product managers, and engineers. And this video is about user researchers, but what about product managers and engineers? How do you work with them? What do you expect from them? What is the smooth collaboration is like? Any tips, tricks for that? Of course, I always have more tips, tricks, and magic to share and i've used my best design thinking and craftsmanship skills to capture those in this video for you check them out right there like and subscribe to support the channel keep designing a better future see you on the next video Tschüss.